Well, first and foremost, how are you? You bounced in the room with a spring in your step, so feeling good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. It's uh, four, four weeks tomorrow since I had the operation, so uh, I'm down to one crutch, which I don't feel I need all the time either, so that's, that's been pretty good. Um, most of the swelling's gone out of my leg, I can do most things, and um, yeah, just a bit difficult to sleep at night a little bit is, is, is the, the most difficult thing. But pretty much I've, I've been at games, obviously I was able to attend the last two games of the season, although not being the, in the technical area. And uh, last week I attended three games in Scotland to, to look at some players that we'd obviously been keeping an eye on. So yeah, it's pretty good to be honest. So the preparations for next season, well underway, they've been underway for some time, I would imagine. Yeah, they start pretty much before the season ends, you know, it's a constant, um, it's a constant process really, you know, we, we, we met um, as a staff, we, we had meetings with all the different departments before the, the last game of the season. Um, we actually have another, you know, we're going to have more of those staff meetings between now and when the season uh, kicks off as well. and just making sure we're as prepared as possible. We've got most things in place in terms of our preparation, um, our pre-season, how that looks, uh, the game schedule, the training dates, everything that goes along with that. You know, and, and the biggest thing, which is obviously the thing that creates the most interest is you know, the recruitment of new players. And it's still very early in, in that cycle, but you know, as I say, we, we've been doing constant work on that really throughout the year and um, you know now about it's about trying to bring that to fruition. So it's fair to say you know what, what you want, what type of player you want? Yeah, look we've 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 learned a lot I think in the period that we've been here at the club and as I've said you know we've we've gone through a process where we've had to let players go. Um, you know players that the club spent money on and players that uh, were expensive players for the club and you know as a result of that we're we're bringing you know typically younger players or um, let's say less expensive players into the club that's that's the, the parameters that we have to work in and financial fair play is a big part of that as well um, but a big part of it was also you know securing those players that we believe were going to be very important for us developing in the club not just over the next 6, 12, 18 months but even going forward from that so if you look at you know from the back Bursic, Wilmot, Suter time and all in long-term contracts you know uh, Tyrese and um, Jacob Brown and, and, and Wright Phillips on long-term contracts and and that's where you know those, those players will be will be very important players for us Jordan Thompson signed the new contract as well and, and sort of the age profile of the squads changed quite quite a lot since obviously we came into the building and now it's about adding the right bits of quality but you know we're operating in a way that you know we're not going to be able to spend money on players we, we know that and I think the supporters know that um, and we have to generate money still out of the current squad and that money that we can generate obviously we, we'll try and put it to the best use possible to improve the squad. It will be a difficult window though won't it if uh, looking to bring players in or, or perhaps not because there'll be value for money out there won't there you would think anyway. Yeah I think there'll be I think what we're going to find is a lot of clubs trading in the same types of players, you know, we've let some players go that I'm sure other clubs will find them attractive. Other clubs will let players go that we will, we will view as attractive as well. And I think in the championship, you know, there's, you've got, you're always possibly, when you're in that free agent market, they're always typically older players who are maybe who've been at a higher level. We, we've had players like that. In the building recently, obviously, with the likes of Fletcher and James Chester that, that we brought to the club on that basis, Phil Jagielka. Um, and then you're in that market of possibly younger players who've either been released or become available on loan from Premier League clubs as well. And you're obviously always looking at the market at, at League One, League Two. But I think what you're seeing in the Championship now is fewer and fewer clubs are spending money unless they receive money. The clubs that will spend money will be the clubs that come down or possibly the clubs that have stayed down and still have obviously the parachute payments which we're no longer in receipt of so it means we have to cut our cloth very uh, carefully um, but it also means that you know that we have to believe that we can improve the squad and we have to be very smart in, in the recruitment that we do. But that's going to be the difficulty isn't it if you're looking to generate transfer funds if, if the cash isn't out there if clubs aren't spending that's going to be a problem it, isn't it? Well it will be yeah but I think that the players when I, when I look at the players that I mentioned earlier the, the players that we have tied up I think that they 
they are players that we believe would be on the radar of Premier League clubs and they Premier League clubs who you know will buy players out of the championship we, we look at you know Nathan's a perfect example of that Nathan Collins you know when I look at Nathan he only played 20 games for us really and a lot of them he played at right back or right side at centre back and, and yet we still received it you know a, a fee in excess of 12 and a half million and also with with considerable add-ons as well and that then allows you to reinvest in your team that in, in the ideal world I don't think the owners or ourselves would like to do that deal, but you have to do that deal at a certain point in time. And um, that's how we'll, we'll view this window. But I think the important thing is, is that we, we'll get good value for those players that we feel in, in our building that have a value. And, and then it's about uh, acquiring the right types of players to, to move the club forward as well. Hearing you say that might set a few alarm bells ringing in the minds of supporters who think mm. that one of the... The crown jewels yeah. might be sold this summer. Well, we, we certainly don't intend to do that. I think you have to be realistic uh, uh, that if if the right price comes along for a player, you have to consider it. Um, you know, I think the supporters probably find it a little bit difficult to understand financial fair play. I, I know I do as a manager, and it's a difficult situation for the owners as well when you want to invest in the team, but the rules don't permit you to do it. And uh, so we're kind of still in the last sort of 12 months of rebalancing the club financially. Um, but the important thing is, is that we won't lose any of our valuable players unless someone pays the right amount of money for them.